Welcome to Livestream. Today we're going to be discussing something called Hatepedia. It's an online resource similar to what you would see with the ADL and their list of dog whistle terms. People who aren't initiated into the culture are in direct opposition to the culture, then analyze the inside jokes and references of that culture, and then they produce documentation just misinterpreting and misinterpreting those terms and using them as excuses to kind of slander that entire culture or group. We're going to create our own. We're going to do the reverse of it. Those of you who are watching this YouTube video after it's been streamed, feel free to drop in the comments if you have contributions that you want to make. Looks like a press kit for managerial class. Yeah, this is just one of those things, kind of like the Canadian Anti-Hate Network that constantly gets referenced by different groups and assumed as though they're authorities because either one, they have certain political connections and two, because it looks professional enough to kind of be believable. And my hope is that one day we can create something comparable to this that could be circulated from our side of the aisle, providing our context. And this is gonna be a long process. What I'm thinking of is from here on, maybe we just add one or two at the end of the stream and gradually over time, we'll fill out this entire document. What they do is they take some of our ideas and some of our positions and they just very dishonestly change the context and reframe what it is that our positions are. So for instance, it would be like parental rights. When we say parental rights, how they interpret that is an attack on LGBT youth, an effort to erase people, uh, trans genocide and removal of a child's ability to truly be who they want to be. You know, like that's kind of how they interpret our expression of parental rights. Again, my intention here is to, to take their phrases to take some of our phrases and set them correct, but also take some of their phrases and recontextualize them from our perspective. So this is an effort to get the framing back because they always set a new framing. In a way, would be like an underground pamphlet or newspaper. Yeah, just something that we could reference and continue to build. When we say that we disagree with Antifa, the criticism there is like, oh, Antifa, that's, it means to literally be against fascists. So if you're against Antifa, you must be pro-fascism. It's like, well, that's a really brain dead take because anyone who actually knows the content knows that Antifa isn't anti-fascist. They are the most totalitarian. They're the most fascist, whatever, right? Um, they just go around attacking people who they disagree with. But the average person who doesn't know the context of a lot of these things, they get hung up by that sort of stuff. And right now, the leftists, they have the initiative. They're the ones who are getting out ahead. They're the ones who are putting all of this information in schools. They have all these resources. And we're doing really good with having people um, live streaming. Like, make no mistake, the Canadian Anti-Hate Network is threatened by all these live streamers. They are trying to raise, <laughs> you guys might find this interesting. The Canadian Anti-Hate Network has now can, has now petitioned the Canadian government for $5 million because they are claiming that there are 10 to 15% of the Canadian population are conspiracy theorists. By their designation, they've just decided that, you know, potentially 15% of the Canadian population is conspiracy theorists, whatever that means. Uh, it just means they believe things we don't want them to. Interestingly enough, it's 6 million. Um, yeah, they're claiming that there's 6 million conspiracy theorists in Canada. And there's the part of me that knows that, um, knows the significance of that number, knows that the meaning of Holocaust literally means burnt offering. And I'm like, are they dog whistling? Are they dog whistling what they want to do? <laughs> so they're very much threatened by all these live streamers. Get this. They received a contract for, I want to say it was school boards. They would speak to different school boards. They would give 10 lectures, three of them in person, seven of them online, $40,000 for that contract. If you break that up, 10 of these sessions, $40,000 for 10 sessions, right? $4,000 a pop. You could say that that's $4,000 for a Zoom call. That's what tax dollars are paying to um, have their school boards get indoctrinated by people that have these sort of ideas. So let's create our own. And again, this is sort of old news. This was sort of the talk of the town for a little while. So for some reason, the Holocaust Museum is scouring the internet for what they are calling dog whistles. So online hate takes many forms and all of the obvious. Hey, Peter can help. 
Um, it's a guide to online hate. It is a reference guide for helping identify symbol terms, characters, and themes that often appear in expressions of hatreds online and off. It describes and shows examples of 292 common visual elements of contemporary hate speech in Canada. So maybe by the end of today, we'll have like five of our own responses. Features listed alphabetically, blah, 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 blah. Trigger warning, trigger warning. Mm -mm -mm. At one point during the convoy, there was someone in House of Commons saying that honk honk wasn't an acronym for Heil Hitler because people were going around honking their horns during the trucker convoy, during the protests. And so then people started to say honk honk in response in comment sections. And this person was claiming that honk honk meant HH and HH means Heil Hitler. So every time, well, not every time, but they're insinuating that people online saying honk honk during the protests that that was this dog whistle. So they're trying to reframe everything. We'll get into some specific examples, but you can see here, there's lots of numbers. Apache attack helicopter, Brenton Tarrant, right? Like he's, isn't that a guy who actually killed people? So it's not like this is entirely incorrect. They are probably referencing here to people who did, you know, Dylan Roof. It's like, yeah, there are people in here. There are references that are, legitimately worth condemnation but there's also like you know clown world clown world is like a symbol of hate you know fymm that's a diagonal thing which just stands for like f you make me so to say make me in a sort of vulgar way that's hate hey we're trying to force something on you and you say make me oh no you you're being hateful you have to let me force this thing on you giga chad is a hate term LGB, interesting. They consider the absence of the T to be hate speech. Nuremberg 2.0, I've definitely referenced that. That's not a hate speech. That's a completely reasonable request. Not even a request. A completely reasonable expectation. Interesting. They consider natives should have total control over their homeland to be one. Greatest ally. <laughs> Perplexity says, I think their magic words are losing their power. People have been desensitized from repetition. That's true. Then it's just a matter of, it's just a matter of whether they can do a shell game and switch the meanings enough to confuse people again. If they keep switching the terms, eventually people catch on and they say, hey, I don't believe anything that you're saying. So then they need to switch identities. Then they need to shell game not just the terms, but they need to shell game the organizations and the groups that are promoting the terms. Gamers Rise Up was one. I missed that one. Scuba says, Nathan, it's very simple. The people that constantly harp in about Christian proselytizing now in turn want to set the culture. USS Liberty incident. Because <laughs> they're like, yeah, it happened, but you have to say it was an accident. It's like, that's like not exactly what the people who were involved said at the time. White Boy Summer. <laughs> Weimar Germany? Okay, let's find Gamers Rise Up. Let's do that one first. Whoops. Gamers Rise Up is a catchphrase from an online movement of the same name. Gamers Rise Up started as a satire of Gamergate, relying on over-the-top tropes of the alt-right. Over time, it became perceived as less satirical and an output for hate speech. Cruelly made memes of the Joker and the phrase, we live in a society, were common elements of Gamers Rise Up memes. You can see the quality of effort put into this. That in no way describes how any of that is hateful. They're, they're insinuating that it's hateful because it has associations with the Gamergate movement, which they're just wholesale. They're assuming that they can just say Gamergate and then you're like, oh, well, that means it's hateful. That proves it. Let's see what they say about Diaglon, just to refresh. Diaglon refers to a network of Canadian far-right activists formed around a, collect a collective of anti-Semitic streamers. Uh, citation needed. It also refers to a fictional country spanning from Alaska to Florida, envisioned as a tongue-in-cheek symbol for political jurisdictions with fewer COVID-related public health restrictions. Diaglon's ideologues espouse anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, racism, homophobia, and misogyny. The network is influenced by firearms culture, military militia movements, and accelerationist movements. Even the RCMP said it wasn't accelerationist. Uh, and it's like, yeah, these are in many cases veterans. Of course, they like their firearms. There's nothing illegal, illegal about firearms. Diaglon is, represent, is represented in a number of symbols, the most prevalent of which is Old Slashy, a black flag with a white diagonal stripe from 
the top left to the bottom right. Yeah, I look at that. It's just they're just front loading it with, you know, Islamophobia, racist, xenophobe, uh, dancing Israelis. Let's check that one out. Okay, dancing Israelis is an anti Semitic term used by white nationalists in reference to conspiracy theories involving five Israeli men who were detained for displaying puzzling behavior during 9 11 terror attacks. The term implies that Israelis were involved or perhaps masterminded the attack. Its use in hate online circles gained prominence after uh, Fuentes directed his followers to reference it in public stunts. I don't think that that's accurate in the sense that I don't think that Fuentes directed people to it. I think that other people referenced it when questioning TPUSA and then Fuentes took credit for it for that line of questioning and it's not puzzling behavior it's it like way more nefarious than that you would have to check out Ryan Dawson in order to really get to the bottom of that one when you set up a camera in anticipation of an event and then you're dancing when the event occurs that's a little more suspicious than puzzling behavior and then their own stories didn't match up they didn't line up Day of the Rake, <laughs> the Leaf, a meme referencing the Day of the Rope that originated on 4chan where Leaf is slang for Canadian user. Day of the Rake memes are an ironic call for violence against Canadians, often invoking Im imagery of Leafs behind burned or scattered. If it's an ironic call for violence, why would that be considered hatred? It's like, isn't the unironic calls of violence the thing that they would actually need to be worried about? When the trans activists have shirts that say protect trans kids and there's a big knife on it, they don't mean that ironically. They mean that literally. They mean that they want to stab you if you disagree with them. And then they're connecting it with Day of the Rope. The Day of precedes the Day of the Rope, right? This book. The Day of can mean a lot of things. It's literally the day that something happens. It doesn't have to be nefarious. The Day of the High Five. <laughs> Wasn't there like the Day of the Woman? That was like a feminist thing for a while. I bet we could find that. and see how that's different than like International Women's Day. Uh, they say that uh, Dave the Rake is nefarious because Dave the Rope is nefarious. Deus Vault, Latin for God wills it, was reportedly the battle cry of Crusaders during the First Crusade. Like other aspects of crusade, Crusader iconography and symbolism, the term is often employed by hate movements, particularly those affiliated with Christian fundamentalism. So they're throwing shade on the First Crusade, Christian fundamentalism, or hate movements affiliated with Christian fundamentalism. While it's most often used in the context of Islamophobic posts and memes, it has also been used to target members of the LGBT community and women. So NPC, non-playable character memes emerged in 2016 on 4chan. It, it originated before that. It originated from this philosophical idea that the majority of people don't have internal voices or they don't have an internal monologue. So there's a question of whether they even have their own independent thoughts or whether they're just externalizing whatever's in front of them like I'm about to do by reading this. Calling someone an NPC is an insult used to dehumanize people by representing them as unimportant, irrelevant, and unoriginal. In hate speech, this intentionally dehumanizes the target. In far-right online spaces, NPCs are used to depict people who embrace progressive political beliefs or those uninitiated into online culture. It's also just hilarious, too, that they have to create these documents because we actually create culture. Like, they're sitting around watching, keeping track of all of our inside jokes. When's the last time they said anything funny enough that we even cared about it? Okay, Nuremberg 2.0, it refers to a fantasy in which perceived political enemies are put on trial for crimes against humanity, just as Nazi war criminals were in the Nuremberg trials. Through pseudo law arguments and conspiracy theories, COVID-19 health and safety measures like vaccine mandates are often considered to be along among these crimes. The advocacy of Nuremberg 2.0, embodies a desire for violence towards political enemies and distorts Holocaust memory by comparing Nazi Germany's actions to modern COVID-19 measures. No, it's a very simple question. Did you violate the Nuremberg Code or not? I've never once had a person be able to defend it. All they will say is that they'll bicker over the definition of experimental, or they'll say that, well, we're not actually bound to the Nuremberg Code. That's not Canadian law. It's like, okay, did we break it or not? Whether we're under it or not, sure, that's another discussion. But did we break it or not? And then did we go fight and kill in other countries, fight and die and kill in other countries in order to put people to justice under the Nuremberg Code? That was good enough for us to enforce over there. So why would it be unacceptable for us to hold our own authorities to the same standard? 07, it is used in a variety of contexts. 
but is particularly popular in some youth-oriented white nationalist online cultures because its use is oftentimes not hateful, but content must be examined before determining the intent. So there, what they were saying was that it's not necessarily hateful, but hateful people are using it. Also, water. Oh my goodness, look at this meme. It's Ben Shapiro in like Star Trek saying, Direct hit, sir. The starship USS Liberty has been destroyed. Uh, U.S. Liberty incident refers to an incident which took place in 1967, during which Israeli aircraft accidentally sank an American ship, the USS Liberty, killing 34 crew members. Anti-Semites and white nationalists often refer to the sinking of the USS Liberty to depict Israeli as an ill-intended, ill-intentioned and conspiratorial state. It's one of those things where you don't get to actually even look at the evidence or they you know, call you anti-Semitic. To even have a discussion about the evidence at all is considered anti-Semitic. Weimar Germany, let's see that. So the Weimar Republic, also known as Weimar Germany, is the name used to refer to the German political movement from the eight, from 1918 to 33. Despite political difficulties, it is remembered for a cultural boom, progressive show, social reforms, and increased social acceptability for the LGBT community. Weimar Germany is often referenced as a symbol in online hate spaces, particularly in neo-Nazi spheres, where it is often negatively likened to contemporary Western culture with the implication that this makes the rise of neo-fascist movements inevitable. So they still look back at Weimar Germany and say that it was a good thing. Holy crap. What kind of books did the Nazis burn? <laughs> What's the, uh, the Riddler posting? It's Riddle me this, no cause for concern. What kind of books did those mean, those mean Nazis burn? Yes, Chad Beam is considered. Okay, we could get lost in this forever. I started this document here. Uh, for now, this is just working title. I don't think that we should actually call it Haterpedia. So just as some examples, okay, this is off the top of my head. <laughs> I put down Canadian Anti-Hate Network. A website used to share and propagate right-wing ideology. <laughs> um, a website intended to criticize. You can put ADL. So ADL, a promoter of violence through the silence of speech, through the silencing of speech. So yeah, you guys immediately get the concept. You immediately get the idea of what it is that we're doing here. <laughs> I just have hate <laughs> used by people who assume to know the hearts of others, a bludgeon they, they accuse other people of when they refuse to understand their concerns. I feel like hate has a lot of, a lot can be put into that. Trans rights are human rights. I've defined it as uh, human rights are whatever transgender activists say they are. All other rights are subservient, an excuse to rob other people of their rights to bodily integrity, a healthy childhood or parental rights. That's pretty thorough. Maybe the wording can be reworked. And I'm okay with being as controversial with this as possible. Like that should almost be the point of this. It's, it, it's not that we want to just take things that are really obvious. Someone just sent me a message. Norm would have contributions. Who's... And you identify yourself as a man. Yes. That's a cis male. Now, I don't understand. Where is that? Is this a new phrase? Yes. It's a way of marginalizing a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Black Lives Matter is a good one to add. Black Lives Matter, an institution that seeks to enslave black people by attacking the nuclear family. That's savage and completely accurate. So next I have trans existence. The declaration that a person's position is fictional and only exists in their mind. If other people do not believe in it, it ceases to exist. Does that convey the concept? I don't feel like that's normie friendly enough. I feel like you guys would get that idea, but I don't feel like the average person would. When they accuse you of, of them ceasing to exist, what people think is they think that that means that people are going to go out and be violent towards transgender people, and that's what they're worried about. But that's not what they're talking about. What they're saying is that I won't exist unless enough people affirm me, unless you believe in this too. It's like literally the magic doesn't work unless enough people believe in it. That's what they mean by existing. Those who don't affirm trans identity are accused of, of trans people ceasing to exist. So trans existence is the declaration that trans identity is a fictional concept that only exists in the minds of people who believe in it. Never heard of trans existence? 
the, you know how they're always accusing you of robbing them of their existence, that transgender people cease to exist. They'll, they'll reference existence a lot. Trans existence is an identity recognition imposed on people that don't care about it. Interesting. That at least needs to be included in here. That's, that's very technically accurate. Sakuba says you could literally do a stream with someone doing this. I think it would be a great stream. Someone like Andrew, but maybe a bit more chill. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Ferryman and I should do this. Maybe I'll pursue him about that. <laughs> Renegade says it's happening right now. It's a stream. We're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I think he means having a co-host. Our democracy. When you import the leftists, when you when you import all the leftists from all over the world who don't care about their own nations to come to more successful countries to destroy them, while all their right-wing minded people stay in their own culture in their own countries and conserve their own cultures. <laughs> That's our democracy. Our our democracy. A uh, fascist. Anyone who isn't a communist, Marxist, or antinatalist. Someone who believes in families or nations. That's good for a that's good for a jab at the left, but that would never work for normies, because the thing is that fascist does actually mean something. What I'm saying is that this is what the left is calling fascists. And really what this needs to be then is this is a translation tool. Yeah, this needs to be framed. This needs to be framed under the understanding that this is a translation tool and not a definition of these terms. It's like when the left says fascist, what they mean is, and not here's an actual definition of what it is. So I need to make sure that. Testing one, two, three. I can hear you now. We can hear you. An appeal to a social contract. It's like an appeal to a social contract that they have undermined and destroyed, right? Or it's this, that, it, it's you could the, apply that to many things. You could apply that to a lot of things, it's, like moral appeals, all these kinds of things that, yes, like you said, they destroyed, but now they appeal to it. The so selective appeal, can, um, foreign interference, when globalists pretend to care about nation states. Okay, I have one more for you to add. Yeah. My taxes. When people say my taxes. No, in the sense that people say it with a certain entitlement, like, you know, they're like there's not a big like they have any control or say right. this because they pay taxes. It's like, you know, yeah, you control this because you pay taxes, sure, buddy. So the assumption that a person has a say in where their taxes are spent, the misplaced assumption. Popcorn is saying translating leftism. Translations of leftism, illuminating the far left. I don't want this to come across as an inherently left or right thing. Even if That's it, the thing I was gonna say. Even if it obviously is, even if as soon as a person digs into the terms, they're like, oh, this is very clearly written from the perspective of people who are right wing. But like they have a monopoly on at accusing other people of hate. You know, they're like, hate is what we say okay. it is. And so I'm doing the opposite now. I'm saying no. Here is what hate is. So you can, you, okay, so you can uh, focus on what they actually do, what a lot of these things contain. And I don't, honestly, I don't think it's just a thing of the left. The Patriot Act, right? It's not a left-wing thing. That's right? a good idea. Add some of that sort of stuff in. Right? So what is this is an uh, encyclopedia of language subversion. Yes, and exactly. Exactly. Basically, what I'm really trying to target is their weaponized terms. You know, the right. like, and what are things that are um, like, what were they telling us during COVID? Two weeks to flatten the curve. Uh, obviously, build back better. You will own nothing and be happy. Save grandma. <laughs> Save Saving grandma. grandma. Yeah. Yes. yes. Don't kill grandma. Um, Slava Ukraine. I want to, with the idea that I want to express is that it's like a way to exploit more resources from other countries to increase the meat grinder and like resulting in increased loss of life in Ukraine. Oh, you, oh, you can put anti Semitic person is a person uh, a Jew disagree with. <laughs> It used to be some someone that hates Jews, but now it's just someone that uh, um, disagrees with uh, with Jewish leadership, even if they're a Jew. So uh, it happened with this actress. Uh, 
What's the name of the actress that is Queen Amidala? Natalie Portman? Yes, Natalie Portman. She made some remarks and uh, a minister in Israel said she was, uh, you know, spouting anti-Semitic remarks or something like that. You called her the Jewish Uncle Tom? <laughs> <laughs> the Jewish Uncle Moosh. <laughs> Okay, um, yes. I think this is a good like a good starting point. And uh, Renegade is saying we should do a term every stream or at least one of the streams in the week. I agree. This should be like a one of the show's regular segments we add to the encyclopedia. I think this document is going to be the start of interesting things. I'm very curious about you guys' ideas. If you have any more you want to add, please put them in the chats. Thanks for watching the live stream. Have a good rest of your week. Second Nation, Canada, all that kind of stuff. Unseated, don't forget.